How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at Chojin X or is it Chaojin X? I'm not entirely sure. I guess we'll have to wait for the anime. Um, that being said, this is written by Sui Ishida who is the guy who wrote Tokyo Ghoul. So that was obviously a really big name and we have to see what's going on next. What is he going to make as a follow-up? And I saw this cover there, and it's a really good cover. I do like it. The strong red and the cool painterly look, and this guy with a bird mask on. And I thought, okay, this looks cool, but I was expecting something like darker and gloomier, and that's not really what this book is. Uh, to be honest, this book was so strange and random at times, I honestly didn't know what was going to happen, and it, it took me a minute to get into it. But that being said, once I did get into it, I found myself really liking it. But for the first three or so chapters, I was like, what's going on here? Uh, a few things about this. This is a bit of a superhero parody. It is kind of like a wackier version of the X-Men, maybe. There are these Chaojin that show up in the world. They're all super powered, and of course, not everyone uses their powers for good. Uh, but you get the normal people doing as best they can. The world doesn't have any large governments. It's all local prefectures. Uh, but for the most part, you know, the people try their best. And one day, these two kids uh, encounter this gangster that's all hyped up on the serum that turns him into a Chaojin and they wind up having to use it to try to escape which makes him into the sort of buzzard uh, vulture character and he can't figure out how to change back so it is at times very silly like chapter 2 is predominantly this really wacky chase sequence and there is bits of humor but it is also a bit of body horror. Oh no, I have a vulture face. Can I turn back? Am I stuck like this? What would people say if they knew? Not just that they knew I looked different, but knew that I was these uh, one of these super powerful beings that had a tendency to go rogue, you know? So there is body horror there. There is an element of Franz Kafka. Body horror, also comedy, and also fun battles. There's, of course, several other Chaojin that he's going to have to fight, and several mysterious organizations that might want the Chaojin for various reasons. So it is interesting, you know, like, when when it gets on the roll, it starts talking about him and his friend, and how the one who gets the powers had always been like the sidekick, and didn't really have a life of his own, and now he's trying to figure that out and be more independent. There's good character stuff in there as well, but it is really random and strange, and it takes you a minute to, to get into this world. I mean, especially me expecting a darker tone from this cover, and then getting things like Chapter 2's wacky chase sequence. It does take a minute to get into it, but when you get into the swings and you really start to understand the tone and what this book's going for, it really does pull you in. And I started off going, this is strange, what's going on? And then I got to the end and I was like, okay, I gotta go buy the next two now, I gotta know what happens next. So it does pull you in, and I will say if it doesn't hook you right away, go ahead and, and finish the volume and see if it hooks you by then, because like I said, it took me till about chapter 3 wrapping that up to really get into the swing, but then it, it really did pull me in, and there's several good ideas here. But if you guys want to see more and in more specifics, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the close-up camera. I'll show you guys a bit of the story and a bit of the art. I'll try not to do any major spoilers or give away too much, but I do want to do a bit of analysis. So if you guys want to see a little bit more, let's go and switch to the close-up camera. All right, here we are inside the castle taking a closer look at Chojin X, 
number one. And right off the bat, I gotta say, I do really love the cover. A nice painterly portrait with a big block of red there. All the covers in this series have a good sense of color, which will match the X, and I think it's a pretty fun unifying theme. Gotta love the painterly portrait. Hem in the mask looks really cool. Gets you wondering what's going on. And of course, the color does match on the side. We can see the Viz signature, all the big letters, and the number one. And then the back is just plain white, but it does have a good bit of synopsis on it. Now below that, we can see the uh, information here. Viz signature, T+, plus, and $14.99. Now, I guess let's just address the size really quick, which is another cool thing about this. I have a regular manga volume here. Let's just use Chainsaw Man. And if we put the two together, we can see that this is a little taller, a little wider, and a little thicker than a regular manga volume. So, yeah, this one is only $9.99. This one's more, but it is bigger and probably worth it. Uh, that's what this Viz signature line does. They tr do stuff that is a little, you know, more involved. Now, that being said, a lot of Viz signatures are in hardcover, and this one clearly is not. Kinda wish it was, but, yeah, whatever. Maybe they'll release a hardcover sometime later. But as it stands, a cool release. If we crack it open, we can see that the inner version of the cover is a little different, a little more pop arty. And then after that, we get the biography for uh, Sui Ishida, and a cold opening that's actually in color. It's kind of weird. We have the cold opening before the uh, the table of contents. So there's the table of contents, and we can see chapter one starts on page three and goes all the way till chapter two is on page 87. Quite the long opening chapter. But we can see that this actually collects six stories in it, or six chapters, one connected story, obviously. And if we flip to the back, there's actually a little bit of bonus features in here. We get character profiles and a little sketch of them. We get a fun little comic talking about how the world works. And we also get a sort of background page where it talks about how uh, the history of this world, like it says that this takes place in 1980. 98 but people have cell phones well it turns out history may have diverted as early as 1918 in this world so that is a uh, that is quite a thing and we also get a nice note from the author and a, a list of suggested soundtracks for each chapter that's pretty cool after that let's talk a bit about the story proper i'm not going to do any major spoilers but i do want to say my piece on a few of the plot points to make sure you guys have a basic understanding as to what this book's about. Uh, but we open up with this kid and he sees uh, this woman being harassed by this gang of thugs. This isn't actually the opening scene. I'll loop back to that later and explain why. Uh, but he doesn't do it himself. He calls his friend because his friend's sort of the local hero and he knows he would just get, get beat up. But his friend is like cool and good at everything and he breaks this guy's arms which the main guy is gonna say wow that's a a little far I don't know if you should have done that but we find out that they've kind of hung around together for a long time and that's sort of their relationship one being the cool guy the other being the tag along and n does he have an identity of his own outside of his friend well the gangsters really upset for his arms being broken off and we get this mysterious man in a mask offering him a shot that will turn him into a chojin and we find out that chojins are like these mutants you know they have a lot of power and not everyone uses it for good. Um, so he's offering him a chance to have superpowers and of course he's going to go and seek his revenge on the two kids that, uh, that stopped him initially. And the match at first you think it's going to be okay, but then 
that hit to the face didn't do anything, and you see that he's got, like, Mr. Fantastic's stretching powers. So the two kids are uh, not doing too well in this fight, but then something strange happens, you know. Uh, apparently there's a bit of madness that sets in sometimes, uh, and he accidentally kills his two friends. So the sidekicks are down, but they were supposed to get a vial of serum too. They had just waited on it to see how it worked for their boss, I guess. But now, their backs are kind of up against the wall. There's two free vials of Chojin serum. Well, you're running out of options, so you might as well try it. And that's where we get the hero version of our main character. He's got this sort of bird face, and we see he's called the Bestial Chojin. And his friend doesn't appear to be looking too good. Uh, he he looks alive, but he has a, a bird for a head. And that's sort of where we get, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, it's the young kid getting a whole bunch of power and changing and becoming stronger. But we also get a body whore element that you don't really see too often in stuff like this. He's carrying his friend back from the hospital when his friend points out, you know, uh, you can't exactly go around looking like that and he doesn't know is it within his powers to uh, change back or not and he has to kind of hide from his family luckily his family is kind of you know in their own little worlds the dad goes to work the sister plays video games he sneaks out and he's just constantly hungry so he has to make all these excuses and we see him later uh, sneaking out of his room and he's got a belt to keep his beak down and he's hiding most of his face in his hoodie there and we can see like he's like okay I'm hiding as long as I can but someday somehow I'm gonna have to figure this out either come out or figure out how to change and you get that and of course there's going to be more fight scenes and more random stuff happening uh, random stuff I guess I should mention that you know I said the book doesn't actually open with those two the book opens with this girl on a plane and we find out that she is a young farmer who just wants to go to a festival enter her tomatoes have her farm do well and have a happy life when we see this guy come up and he wants to go to the bathroom and when this old lady takes a minute to move he's about to punch her in the face Again, Chojins can go mad with power. She stops this, and he uses all of his power to set fire to the plane, and we think she's dead. You know, we think, okay, that's the, that's the opening scene to show how bad these uh, Chojins can be. But chapter two, and again, we're not going very far in the book, but all of a sudden, chapter two, we're back with this girl, uh, somehow a lot of people have survived the plane crash, we'll find out why. Uh, she's stranded in the city she doesn't know and she's just trying to figure a way out when all of a sudden the person she asked the question to gets killed and it turns out this guy is still following her and that's where we get in chapter 2 this book being super weird. There's a scooter chase scene they start off on these scooters and then you know she talks about how she wishes she had a tractor and then all of a sudden she finds one and you know she has tractor driving skills and the bad guy will hire this gang of bikers that either are sheep or wear sheep mask I'm not entirely sure but needless to say the tractor motorcycle chase scene <laughs> Uh, with sheep people, yeah, that gets pretty wacky. And I've talked about the book a lot, but there is a lot that happens. I don't think I went past the halfway point at all. Again, more action sequences on both sides, and you kind of don't know who all the other powers are at play. You know, this girl that kind of gets roped into stuff, uh, trying to help the old lady, and then your main guy who has transformed and doesn't know if he can change back, and there's at least two other forces at play that they're going to kind of get torn between and various other Chojins show up 
and battles happen. And it's one of those that I really didn't know where it was going. And it did take me about half the book to really get into it. But when you understand the pace that this is kind of like a wacky X-Men and you understand where it's going and you get a feel for the characters, I really did sort of fall into this world. After about the halfway point, I started to really like it. And then by the end of it, I was like, oh man, I need to get volumes two and three because those are out now as well. Uh, so yeah, definitely found found myself really liking this book by the end. A big surprise because again, with this cover, I thought it'd be dark and glooming, but it's not really. <laughs> it's very interesting and uh, strange book, but I can definitely recommend it. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my manga playlist where you can find a ton of me talking about Junji Ito, but also Orochi, uh, probably find Chainsaw Man in there as well. Uh, I'm working on filling this out more. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.